Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Well, good morning, Melbourne. How do you do? Whoop. One day, Swanee. One sleep until the comedy festival. I'm so excited. This time tomorrow, we will be kicking off at the town hall. Be fantastic. We're going to give some tickets away today, Dino. 13, 24, 10. Fantastic. Now? Yeah, cool now. You'll be yes. there tomorrow. Are we getting jokes aren't funny up, Jackie Charles? No. No. Why? What? Hard pass from Pang. Why? Uh, we're going to talk to Pang. Uh, I know why. Why? This is very easy. And I know he'd be listening on the way in the car. Yeah. He gets embarrassed in front of his brethren. Oh, yeah. No, but in front of, yeah, but no, yeah, I know. But the punters are going to get up there and they'll roll out some shit jokes yeah. mm. and Sam will get all embarrassed in front of his brethren. Let's yeah. put this to him on the radio. That's uh, fair. That's know, fair, actually. No, no, it's not fair. We all suffer. No, it's very unfair. We all suffer, including the audience. Yes. Uh, I love seeing people just getting out there, having a crack, letting mm. it all hang out, and rolling out a joke and trying to impress Pang face to face. Well, That's it's what like, I love about it. It's like red faces, John. Absolutely like red faces. The jeopardy of it all, Swanee. Who doesn't want to be there to see that? That's true. Look, that's true. I see both sides of the of the story. Well, we're on the right side. Tell you what I don't see the, the both sides of is yeah. the Chris Rock v. Will Smith. We've got yeah. to talk about it. We have to do an hour on it. It's we're, the craziest thing that's ever it's happened. It's the craziest thing. Maybe we put aside a, a chunky break in the seven. Yeah. To, uh, to discuss it, because I want your thoughts on it, Dino. I want your thoughts sure, on it, Jonathan. Sure, we'll cover it. Absolutely. It's uh, astonishing. Astonishing. <laughs> to the point where you think, that is a prank. That is a setup. Yeah, you, well, initially you would think that. Mm. Okay. Well, wow. we'll get to that. Unbelievable. If you don't know what we're talking about, I'm sure it's on our Instagram page. Oh, no, you, I think everyone knows. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Make up for missed holidays with whatif.com this Easter. Ocean View apartment for me, water park for the kids. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. What If is Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travelling. No I need no. 6,000 cc's of content. Stat. Nurse. Quick. It's Chrissy, Sam and Brownie's emergency room. 13, 24, 10. When have you hurt yourself in a stupid, regrettable way? You'll notice that my leg is raised. Mm. My f- foot is raised. Last night at about 7.30. It's outside having a cup of tea, hiding from my children. It's the quietest place in the house, outside. And I'd been out there for about 15 minutes, just going through some bits and bobs. Mm. My tea, I had a cup of tea, and I had about a third of it left in the mug. Still hot? Cold, hence why I was going back inside. She was avoiding her kids. And I thought, I'll make another cup of tea, and then I'll I'll stop avoiding the kids. Mm. But I got up, and my foot was asleep. (laughs) Because I was, you know where this is going, don't you, Dino? I think so. Because my legs were crossed. Ah, Yeah, I was in the position. A little bit of pins and needles, and you're past that point. Well, it when wasn't you, pins and needles. When it goes to sleep. It was, yeah. It, it didn't. It wasn't pins and needles, or I wouldn't have taken the risk that I took. So I went. Oh, my foot's asleep. So I shook it around a bit. Mm. Kept on walking. Hit through the back door. Went down like a sack of shit. Wow! Boom! That would have been good to see. The kids would have loved that. Tea everywhere. Smashed. Mm. Did you cry? No, I didn't. I didn't. Mm. Smashed the tea. I had in my hand my ear pods because I'd just come back from a walk. Yeah. Geez, you're really avoiding the kids. <laughs> <laughs> like you're outside. Yeah. you got a cold audio cup of tea. And, visual. <laughs> and the audio. The headphones are in. Jonathan, I, would, I, I make absolutely no illusions about the avoidance You and Kylie tactics. Brown are <laughs> Mate. <laughs> Cut from the same cloth. My ear pods went everywhere on the floor. Anyway, I sat there. My son, Kit got me a packet of peas and I sat exactly where I was. I didn't get up because I thought, I can't mess with this ankle. I can't mess with this ankle Mm. because that means that I have to be at home more. Mm. Mm. You know? It'll affect your walking. Uh, It'll affect everything. On the uh, highways. So I was very, I was very, very nervous and it's got like a big purple, um, like a swollen explosion on it. Mm. Oh, it's bleed out. You're and one of those. You're, you're, some people, are, it really shows up when they swell. I reckon. It goes blue and purple. I reckon it's bad. And I haven't taken the bandage off because I don't want to see it. But what a stupid way to hurt yourself. A 
the frozen foot. Would have been good to see it though, Dana. Yeah, you got any security footage of that? Yeah, that would like that. I'm sad that mm. I, I don't. God damn it. Because it was very mm. impressive. Mm. It was very impressive. How embarrassing. So it was sort of really nice though. Like Peg came and sat on the floor with me and like patted my... Mm. Patted my shoulder, so I'm like, oh, good. Well, there's, she's not a serial killer. Did you take your headphones out? She though? feels something. <laughs> no, they were, yeah, I did. No, <laughs> yeah. they were all over the floor. Everything was all over. Tea, smashed cups, everything. Yeah. And I've just got regret. I've got huge regret because it's going to hold me back for the next, I'm going to say, 48 hours. Well, I don't know. We've been giving some advice in the uh, kitchen or in the uh, the office there. Mm. It's one of you were just asking what you should do. What do I do? A bit of icing for the next 24 hours. Yeah, I've got ice on it now. You've got to get some, some elevation. You've got your foot up on the chair. Yeah. We like that because we've got to get you back out in the foot pass. I've got to get, I've got to get back Absolutely. or I'll lose my mind. Absolutely. 13, 24, 10. When have you hurt yourself in a, in a weird and embarrassing way? This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Aaron. Uh, as Prince would say, dig if you will a picture um, of me currently unrolling a bandage around my right. ankle because yesterday I rolled my ankle at home while holding a cold cup of tea which smashed all over the floor. One of my favourite Royal Dalton cups too. Ah, oh, damn. It was your oh, turn to have your silly moment, your silly accidents. I remember last year for me, it was the turf toe when I was yes. running down Glen Ferry Road and I tripped on the kerb in front of a mother pushing a pram and just yes. everything went everywhere. It was just embarrassing. There's no need for it. It's the worst. It's yeah. the, the dumb ways that we do it. Absolutely. Do we have Paul Kelly's dumb things? Let's use that as the soundtrack. In the middle, yes. In the, in the middle of a dream. Erin, what do you Aaron got for from us? from Packetham. So my husband decided that he wanted ice cream. So he chased the ice cream truck down the road and in doing so he stubbed his toe on the gutter and then ripped it open. Yeah, oh. brother. Oh, my God. I can that relate is, to that, Aaron. That's not unlike Brownie's yeah, story. Br- Brownie did almost exactly that but got a, a year-long condition of turf toe from a gutter on Glen Ferry Road in Hawthorne. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> did your husband get the ice cream? I need to know. We, we managed to catch the ice cream truck and he hobbled home very sadly. That's pretty ice cream in his hand. That would have been hilarious. Kids would have loved that. Mate. Speaking <laughs> of ice cream, can I just do a community service announcement? How long has it been since you've had a cone from... Um, Mr. Whippy. McDonald's, Dino. Uh, yonks. <laughs> They're 70 cents now, but they may be the most delicious soft serve ice they cream in the world. They are though. I That's... had them with a friend a couple of weeks ago and it was mind-blowing. Let's never forget they started at 20 cents. Yes, 20 uh, cent let's cone. forget that. You're off to, well, you're fuel off to... was also 60 cents only 15 years ago. <laughs> That's back right in my day. Uh, <laughs> everyone gets tickets to the movies, uh, reclining at Hoyts, hoyts.com.au. Marcelo, Marcello. Good Marcello morning. from Kyneton. Hey, morning all. What is the dumb yeah. way that you've hurt yourself? I was pretty dumb. I was um, trying to change a light glow and I dislocated my shoulder. What? You were that trying to change a light globe and you dislocated your shoulder? Yeah, it probably didn't help that I was on top of my mate's shoulders. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't sound like the right way to change a light now, globe. Now, just tell me, Marcello, did you get it back in? Did you have to go to the hospital or like Martin Riggs in Lethal Weapon, you banged it against the locker to get it back? Oof. Nah, look, I, I, I've tried that. Two shots of pethidine for me. Back in. Yeah, oh, pethidine. You in the hospital. Yeah, how good's pethidine, by the way? <laughs> Trish, good morning. It's, it's actually very good. Trish! Hello? What's, Hello? What'd you do, you big goose? Oh, I was walking in a shopping centre and I slipped on a hot chip and I slid across the floor and I broke the top off my femur. Oh! On a hot chippy, Trish. (laughs) On a hot chip and I needed a hip replacement. Oh, Trish, this is terrible. That's a bad break. I know. My old man did the same thing. It's the neck of the... Is it called the neck of the femur or the... Yeah, you know the ball at the top of the femur? Yes, hip replacement. So they can't reconnect it, and I, and I've had two children, and by God, I have, <laughs> I don't think I've ever experienced pain like it. So oh, sorry. Trish, it's embarrassing Dino. for you though, Trish. I'm so sorry, Trish, but a single hot chip brought you down. Brought me down. Jeez. So and did you go? Did you go down on a chip? Did you go down like a sack of potatoes, like I did yes. last night? Yeah. At- Absolutely. And Absolutely. what about the sound that came out of your mouth when you hit the... That, that, that's the also the unique part of it, is that your body makes a sound when you hit the floor that you can't ever recreate. Can you, no. can you try? 
the F bomb. I no, because it knocked me like I was like winded. Yes. How long ago was this, Trishy? Two nineteen. Oh, 219. Trish, did you bounce up off the tough. floor very quickly? 2019, a tough year for you, Trish, but did you bounce off the floor quickly through embarrassment, though, until you realised you were in pain? No. No, I went down and people rushed to help me and they sat me on a chair and I just went, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yeah, there it's it is. It's fine. And then I said, oh, it's really funny, but I can't feel my leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Fresh you you shouldn't should wear a helmet in pub. Uh, chicken uh, salt on the chips. Ever wanted to offer the team some direct feedback? Well you can. Shoot us an email at breakfast at nova100.com.au to be part of Chrissy Sam and Brownie's mailbag. Aaron Blaby, the creator of the best selling children's series, Pig the Pug, the Bad Guys, and Thelma and the Unicorn. He sold 30 million books and spent 120 weeks on the bestsellers list. And you can see the film version of his book, Bad Guy, called The Bad Guys. It's in cinemas Thursday. Here's Aaron. So thrilled to have you in the studio, Aaron Blaby. You are m- me and my kids' favourite author, hands down. That's very nice of you to say. Thank and you. And in the intro, they didn't mention Guff, which is one Guff. of my favourite books of You're all time. You're kidding. You're the only person in Australia who's read it, as far as I know. It's, oh, it's, really? I, I, oh, this, maybe that's a little harsh, but no, it's, it's not one of my popular ones, oh, that's for sure. Beautiful. I'm so pleased you like it. What's Guff, and, what's Guff about? It's about like a ruggie. Like yeah, a, like a, yeah. Like a security blanket. Yeah. And my kids had ruggies, so I would read it, but I would, you know, change the word guff to ruggie so that they could really identify with... That is very <laughs> cute. Character. No, my, my youngest, it was his toy that inspired it, and he was, he's, he's still not happy that it wasn't a gigantic commercial success. That oh, particular. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. Obviously, you're most famous for Pig the Pug and Bad Guys. I mean, they are yeah. huge books. Thelma's catching up, though. It is amazing. Um, yeah, I love Thelma the Unicorn. I yeah. give that to every little girl I ever that ever crosses my path. And you've got another beautiful one. It's uh, about a ghost. Uh, oh, yeah, that's an old one. I ghost love Miss that. Annabelle Spoon. Annabelle Spoon. Yeah. Oh, my God, I can't get to the last two pages without weeping. Oh, that's... Uh, that's Honestly, beautiful. he is the best. Have you got the it's full the same, library, Jonathan? It's the same when I read your book, Brownie. I, I, was, <laughs> awesome. I was actually crying from the start <laughs> yeah. to think, oh, my God, I've got to keep reading this, otherwise you'll be upset. Especially the last two years of my career. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're both best-selling authors, though. This is Don't put yourself in Aaron's category. Well, what a disgrace! Obviously, yeah, the numbers are quite. There's quite a contrast in the numbers, but <laughs> you only need five thousand in this country to be a bestseller. You know, so you're not, you're yeah, not wrong. that, that you're extra not wrong. seven eight million is just wasting it's just time. Cream. It's just cream. <laughs> Aaron, we are well specifically. We are, your what, the book. Your book, The Bad Guys, has been made into a film. Yes. So it's amazing because I even look at the book now and it, now it has that little bit down the bottom that says, now a major motion picture from oh, DreamWorks. No. That must be a nice feeling. It is just the best thing ever. I, look, it's amazing. It's funny, I was remembered yesterday we were talking about it. The day I invented them, it was eight years ago, I was walking in the Blue Mountains and I had the idea and I texted it to a friend. I just sort of gave her a you know single sentence description of The Bad Guys and she texted back, that sounds like a DreamWorks movie. It's wow. true. True and story. What was it like ten, they... ten minutes after I came up with the idea, someone and you said that... you hadn't written the books, no one had seen no. it. I know, isn't that bizarre? Wow. What isn't was that weird? they called? Um, look, it was, it was a long process because I actually went across to Hollywood and I got an agent over there and we, we covered the whole town and a number of studios were interested. Um, and we went. We just kept finding ourselves gravitating back to DreamWorks. It wasn't just because of that text. It, it was, <laughs> but it was. Uh, you know, it, they just got it. They just got what it was. I've They've, seen the movie. It is fantastic. The cast is incredible. Thrilled to see Sam Rockwell. How cool is Sam Rockwell? Oh my god! <laughs> Did you do much time with Rockwell uh, over the process? Uh, all I know. So I've met the cast once, and it was again because of COVID online. So wow. he's, he's, Sam's too cool for school. He's amazing. amazing. He's amazing. And yeah. Mark Maron's in it, and oh. uh, in it. It's 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 amazing. But um, I wanted to say, of course, Hollywood is littered with stories of. 
um, of, of, of writers having their original work and then it, it being turned to a film and they're mm. absolutely mortified uh-huh. at the finished yeah. product. <laughs> are you, well, Swanee and I, we all loved it, but it, we, are you happy with it, how it all turned out? Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted. I'm really bad at pretending to be happy about something if I'm not, <laughs> so I, I actually don't think I could do this process if I didn't love it as much as I do. I think they've just nailed it. And my gig is because I'm one of the executive producers, but my what that meant was my gig, I think, was to kind of keep the spirit of the books alive. And yeah. if it ever felt like it was veering off from that, to try and steer it back. And we've done it, and they've just killed it's it. It's cheeky and yeah. funny and completely, you know, enjoyable for parents to watch, which is a great... I mean, I thank you so much for your books and now your films because... There is nothing more soul destroying than reading boring books at night. It, Seriously, it does your head in, doesn't it? it well, this this Ugh. not that I'm talking about my book here. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, Brownie. Of course no, not. Just the audio. Of course not. Just the audio. Absolutely not. Um, I took my kids to see the film. They loved it, and my ten-year-old uh, Kit has uh, you're his favourite author, and he's got some questions for you. Oh, excellent. Hi, Aaron. The movie was great. I have a couple of questions. Do you have any future books in mind? Do you have any future books in mind? I do. Well, in the sense that The Bad Guys is a continuing series. There's 20 episodes. I've just finished 16, so there's four to go before the big finish. Mm -hmm. And I have a new series that is coming out late this year, I think, early next year. It's called Cat on the Run. It's a like a version of The Fugitive. Oh, it's fantastic. The, 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 nice. the, world's, <laughs> the world's number one cat video star gets accused of something she didn't do and um, oh. has to go on the yes. run. It's it's pretty... It's, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. It reminds really me of... Um, uh, of course, straight away I saw Keyboard Cat, that sleepy yeah, yeah, yeah. That that, ginger cat that playing made, the that keyboard. That makes an appearance, Fantastic. yeah. Fantastic. Um, but it's, uh, it's in the same universe as the bad guys, so they actually cross over oh, a little bit. Brilliant. Kit, kit's yeah. up again. What was the reason or inspiration behind the bad guys series? Boring books. I was sitting on the couch with my youngest reading something that nearly put us both into a coma. <laughs> and I thought, wouldn't it, there's got to be something better than this. Sure and, and I thought about what what did I love when I was a kid and I started thinking about scary animals and Spielberg movies and then I was thinking about, you know, and then I thought, how can I make this cool? And I was thinking about Tarantino and then just sort of mashed it all up. So Fantastic. that's where it came from. Kitty! We'll pick the pug be a movie in the future? Uh, you, we are working on that right now. I actually have a feeling it might be a TV show. Ooh, but, uh, exclusive. I, mm. I love Pig the Pug so much. He's, I relate. He's a reprehensible little bugger. Oh, and mm. he's so mean to Trevor. He's just a terrible dog. Terrible. Well, yeah. I am available. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got to let you go. You're a very busy man. But I just want to ask, in these, these um, books being, you know, transformed into movies and television. Are you going to put yourself in any of them? Because you're a very accomplished oh, actor no, just looking no. at you. Oh. Looking at your IMDb here, mate. There was uh, is, there's GP, cool. there's Phoenix, there's um, Halifax <laughs> FP, oh, there's man, Blue Healers. Man what, from the snowy river. What did you play in Blue Healers? The golden age of Australian television. <laughs> um, I, what, Blue Healers? Yeah. Baddy? Were you a baddie? I don't recall what I... Oh. I, I know, I think, I think my... I think I... I uh, my gay lover was dying of something, I oh. think. I can't recall. So I common, don't know. But I was baddie in lots of things. I was a terrible actor. What about you? Just we, terrible. Uh, 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 this last one, uh, All Saints, Water Rats. But you, were you in Erskineville Kings, the, the movie with Hugh Jackman I, and I, Claudia Carvin? Uh, uh, Claudia wasn't in it. Hugh was. Oh, okay. and, and I was easily the, the weakest link in that, <laughs> in that film. It, 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 I, I was a terrible actor. I'm, I'm quite honestly <laughs> mortified when it gets mentioned. I was so pleased when you brought it up. Oh, I'm, glad we, I'm glad we brought it up. That <laughs> made you uncomfortable. Genius writer, terrible actor. <laughs> this Thursday, the bad guys hit cinemas. It's amazing. Go see it. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie, the podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your Tuesday. Welcome to the microphone. Samuel James Payne. Good morning, Melbourne. How do you do? I do fine. Fine, sir. Much like the rest of the world in this show. I heard you talking about it earlier. I'm just... You can't, you can't believe what happened yesterday. I, I'm too scared to do jokes because I think Brownie might just smack me. <laughs> smack me across the mouth. That's Fair what happened. Fair enough. Because you are... Uh, 
he took a well, though, Chris Rock. He took it to too it. well, I I'm, 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 mm. I'm arguing too well. Yeah, he was so I, I'm shocked. a bit skeptical about it. Still, hey, Brownie, still skeptical Brownie, about Brownie, can you be skeptical? No, no, which, which bit of it after the slap do you do you not believe? Oh, no, after the slap was all right. It just, it just. It, there was enough around it to say, what's what going on What you're doing here? now is like when people go to us. Is it scripted? Yeah. Is the show yes. scripted? Yeah, that's what he's doing. I would have thought a man who's been involved in this industry long enough would go, mate. Because mm. Chris Rock didn't... I know he handled himself well in terms of he didn't punch on, but he didn't He he's, didn't really get out of it as well. Like, for, for one of the greatest comedians ever. He stayed reasonably composed, I Yeah, thought. but he was... Because he, he was, was so he was, shocked. He was... Uh, what are the young people... He was shook. Shook. He was shook. <laughs> <laughs> he was totally shook. Oh, that's uh, every... It's a comedian. Worst nightmare. You do a joke and then someone comes up and yeah. smacks you in the mouth. And that person's Will Smith. <laughs> and billions of hey. people are watching. And then, and then Will, 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 like, Will, like the, Will initially liked the joke, though. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> loved it. The, you know, those, the, these cutaways. You go, I wonder what happened when it cut back to Chris Rock and then the next thing you know, uh, Will Smith is walking towards him. I go, oh, I wonder what, wonder what happened in that mm. cutaway swanny. Oh, he saw his wife's face. <laughs> that's, what he, that's what happened. <laughs> Nuts! But that would have been enough. That's it's every comedian's worst nightmare that a, a flat a joke falls flat. Yeah, that's the bit too that Rock will probably you know wasn't yeah. his greatest joke. Tell you terrible. hasn't fallen flat. Craig McRae, John. Do you like well, that? that's good craft. Yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> you like He's that? coming up. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie on Instagram. Craig McRae, a former Brisbane Bears slash Brisbane Lions player turned Collingwood coach. Oh, this one's big. Collingwood partner Emirates is celebrating 25 years of flying to Australia. Call 13 24 10 now to win footy tickets and a spot in the Pies Guard of Honour at this Saturday's match against the Cats at the G, all thanks to Emirates. <sighs> Here's Craig. Welcome back, Craig. G'day, Chrissy. How are you? Good morning, guys. Good. I've got two uh, very hardcore football questions before we get on to the to the big stuff. Oh, righto. What car is Arrow to start off with? Are you any relation <laughs> to the Australian singer Jade McRae? No, I'm not. No, I'm a big fan, though. Are you any relation to the <laughs> McRae family um, that the beachside resort town McRae is named after? No, spelled differently, but great questions, Chrissy. Good Thank start. you. Colin McRae. Yeah. Colin McRae, the rally driver. As, no. No? All right. As no, you Dino. were, Pang and Brown. <laughs> I'm out of McRae's. <laughs> hey, Brady. Hello, Fly. How are you, mate? Great start yeah, to the season. Two and zip, mate. Yeah. Yeah, oh, look, I, uh, I'm driving into work today, and, uh, yeah, the Toyota, uh, they have the flags over at Toyota just coming over the Westgate there, and, oh. yeah, it's nice to see the Collingwood uh, flag flying high up, up, uh, up the top of the ladder. Yeah, it's, it's a great start. I'm glad it's not at half mast. Uh, no, big game on Saturday night against the Catters uh, Fly. Yeah, yeah. Look, we've uh, we've just started our prep, mate, uh, into the Cats this week. We we sort of reviewed yesterday um, around a performance on the weekend, as you do, and then as as always, you, you don't get to smell the roses too long, mate, and you got to just keep moving. So uh, yeah, we're looking forward to the big game. Now, I've got a big question for you. We ask the hard questions on this show. Uh, Fly, Craig, Fly McRae. Now, famously, yep. we were coached by Lee Matthews. Yes. Whose nickname to the public is Lethal. Yes. Uh, except internally it wasn't Lethal. So everyone was too scared to call him Lethal, except for Daryl White. Are the Collingwood <laughs> players calling you Fly, or are they too scared to call you Fly? No, nah, no, everyone calls me Fly, as you know. I've been trying to reclaim Craig for a long time now, but... Yeah, this is a nickname I got back when I had a really bad undercut head cut when I was growing up as a kid. And, um, yeah, it looked like Marty McFly out of Back to the Future, and it's just yes. uh, I just can't shake it. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's with me forever, well, and it's timely. It's timely with Ever- Everett's mate. I know they mentioned it in the in the uh, intro there that uh, been an incredible partnership we've had for 23 years with with Emirates, and yeah, celebrating uh, yeah their, their partnership and. Yeah, get on, get on the lines and get a ticket to the uh, a double pass. You're the doing game good on the plugs, Fly. Jeez, you're doing you're on, good. Yeah, this is a good well, they, well, they put food on the table for us for a long Jeez, time. You're a right? company right. man now. Yeah, he's covered off Toyota <laughs> and uh, and Emirates. Well, that was for me. I told Fly about Toyota. <laughs> Fly, <laughs> no, did Toyota have any affiliation with Collingwood? I thought there was no, Holden know. and no, Lexus. Maybe with and Craig, all? though. Oh, with Craig. You never know. <laughs> well, I'm, we're going to go with Craig. Forever you'll be known as Craig on this show. Now, Thanks, Peggy. Um, Sam will do, mate. That's all right. <laughs> Craig, <laughs> I wanted to. Br- Br- Brownie obviously speaks about uh, his love and affection of Lee Matthews and what a wonderful leader he was. You you played in those three premierships as well. 
I asked this of many, many um, ex-footballers. Can you remember a single thing that Lee Matthews <laughs> ever said to you? Great question. Oh, it, it, it's a great question, Sam. Um, after the game on the weekend, I did say, oh, look, um, I'll keep this post-match very brief because uh, uh, having played for 10 years, I can't remember one of Lee Matthews' post-match speeches. So, <laughs> um, no, nah, he was an incredible father figure for most of us now. And, uh, yeah, look back with fond memories, he's, you know, he's a great role model for all of us, wasn't he, Brownie? He's unbelievable. And uh, all his all I find in myself coming up with all my, his words and his sayings and some of his principles, yeah. even to the kids when I'm roaring yeah. at the kids uh, during the week. Hey, can I share a story about you, Brownie? Or, yes. Or maybe another that haven't heard. I I used to play uh, along Brownie, alongside Brownie at half forward for a long time. And um, Chrissy, he'd, he'd get me before the game and he'd say, hey, hey, fly, just run and buy me, run and buy me. So just before every centre bounce at the start of every game, I'd have my opponents sort of try to bump into me and check me and. I'd run from one side of the, the 50 to the other past Brownie, and all I'd hear was this, Hurr! and he I'd look around. Him. Them. Yeah, he, he I'd will look smith around them. Yeah, he'd look around them for you. He did. He'd look, I'd look around and had my opponent on the ground at the start of every game for five years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, it's all great when you're trying to run his opponent past you for the start yeah. every game, and then would knock, yeah. him, knock him down. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Knock him yeah, down. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, it just it used to it. Well, it, it just used to frustrate me that uh, Fly would have these blokes because obviously Fly was one of our gun goal kickers. It just frustrate me, and I'm trying to make my way in the team as a young man. I thought I've got to got to prove myself to the senior why, players. Why Craig though? Was it? Did you do it for any other any other teammates? You're no, saying no, that Craig did, wasn't a great player. Well, he needed help. Opponents well, out. Well, he was the smallest on the field. He's probably the only bloke that couldn't handle himself. <laughs> no, no, he was, uh, <laughs> no. I used to love it. Fly used to love it as well. Obviously, it's a big job and big shoes to fill. Uh, are you taking but part of that job of course is um, the post game press conferences. Yeah. Were you watching Bevo's press conference a couple of weeks ago <laughs> with I a was. pen pen? Yeah. Yeah I was and you know I didn't catch the game until that stage so it's hard for me to judge. But um, yeah look it's it's part of the parcel of the of the of the job and um, you know the frustrations come with it and being able to be yourself. I'm just trying to be myself, Chrissy. I've I've, I've Coach for two games. I haven't, I haven't been around very long, so it's, uh, it's hard for me to judge. Just run the journos past Brownie. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Run them by me. <laughs> I'll right, so fix them up. Uh, <laughs> Fly, uh, how's the uh, – you have done radio before. I just want to bring up just a little known fact that uh, you used to be on a radio show with Acker called The Acker and Macca Show back in the day. Yes. We were playing. yes. <laughs> well, this was during the playing days. During the playing yeah. days, absolutely. Isn't that yeah. right? How did you wrangle it with uh, Acker? How did you keep him under control? Uh, I didn't. That's. The, I, I thought it was going to be the Macker and Acker show, but clearly Acker wanted to be uh, front and centre. But <laughs> it was. Uh, no, it was. It was fun. It was a fun time. Nothing like that was in Queensland. So we we got together and thought, let's um, let's put it put something out there. We went to a, a community radio station and got it up up and running and. And it's just basically just um, review the games and, and talk about footy, which, you know, like I said, in Queensland didn't have much of that at that time. Did Acker, um, did Acker fiddle the numbers of the ratings as well, like he did with his he golf did, scores? Oh, <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He did. Oh, there were so many times because I, I was, we were both playing and I, and I just be saying, you can't say that, Acker. We, we can't say that. But yeah, there was a lot of times that there was a bit of controversy as well, but it was a lot of fun as well. Acker could play. Acker had 13 holes in one on uh, Saturday. He played, uh, <laughs> <laughs> crack, crack, crack He's amazing. <laughs> and that was the number one global show That's ever. Right. You do a handstand yeah. after every broadcast. Craig, yeah. Craig, do you think, in the, you say, I know you've only been the coach, it's a, it's a, like Swanee said, it's a big job. You're the coach of Collingwood. It's an amazing achievement. And, yeah. you know, it's off to a great start. Can you, uh, do you think in your... Um, do you think Jonathan Brown will one day or could make a good coach? No, I wouldn't have thought so. Uh, oh, no, no, I'll answer it for him. Oh, look, I, I think he's got the, the aura and he's got the, the personality to do it. I, I don't know if he's got the passion to do it. It's, it's a lot of work. Um, yeah, look, yeah, and I think he hates work. You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I, I think um, yeah, whatever Brady would do, we'd do it well. As a, as a great teammate of mine, I, uh, I love Brady and, uh, yeah. I'll get him down the pies if you want, Brandy. We, we, you know, you can get get down there working for us. Well, it would be the first time. Wouldn't it be the first time that the uh, the pies have come knocking? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, I've heard yeah. this story about the contract. He thinks he brings it up a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Greg, fly, yeah. we're going to roll, but thank yeah. you so much. Again, the uh, Collingwood Partner Emirates are celebrating 25 years of flying to Australia. The phones are going nuts. You can try to get through, but if you want footy tickets and you want to be in the Pies Guard of Honour this Saturday at the G, uh, call, try and call now. All thanks to Emirates. Thanks, yeah, man. That was fun.
Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, uh, mate. Day. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Jack's got issues. You got them too. He gave them all to Sam and he'll give them to you. Emergency edition. Jack Charles from the uh, early... Ch- Shift, early show. show. Early show, Yo. good morning. Yeah, there Jack it is. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, of course, the young man he has some issues that I usually can't relate to, but that doesn't mean that they're not important to him. Mm. And he tells me about them. Mm. And sometimes I bring them to you guys. Mm-hmm. Now, this one here, you and Brownie, Swanee, yeah. you are on here. I'm telling you, put your hard hats on and get to work. Okay, great. <sighs> Dear Sam. <laughs> I have. Ex- he wrote this to you. He didn't just mention it. I have accepted my first paid Instagram post. Wow! A brand this I is actually- a big moment. A- this is- he's an influencer. A brand I actually love reached out. Levi's. I always, I've always worn their jeans with love. Being my first paid Come post. Come on, since general pants casuals on Saturday know. mornings. <laughs> I'm, a, uh, I'm a just it's jeans a man. Circle of life. It's a, don't, don't worry, it's a, it's a collab. Co- whatever. Whoa. Collab with Josh Jeans, Levi's and Josh Being Jeans. Being my first paid I post, it. I want to do the brand justice, but how do I do it without looking like a complete flog? Love, Jack. <laughs> oh, come now, on, listen, you, I, you're, there's, a, there's a couple of masters here. There's a couple of mm. masters in terms of Chrissy with her mm. wonderful association with Priceline mm. and Brownie with the rest of the world, right? With all <laughs> the other all the other products. Mm. So, what's your advice to this young man in his first paid? Instagram post. He wants he wants it to look classy and he wants to do the brand justice. The first piece of advice slash comment that I have, um, if this was a Phil Donahue show, I'd identify it by saying statement. Yeah. Um, well done in choosing a brand that you actually like yeah, and believe in. That's half the that's half the work. Totally. Um, <laughs> I've been offered risky before. I was like, I wouldn't have thought. No, and that's good. That yeah. is that is right. It's an error that a lot of people make is aligning themselves with, with things that they don't actually believe in. Yeah. People can smell that a mile off. Totes. Um, Totes, man. I think <laughs> I think you just post. What, what do you have to do? What, what's involved? Oh, the brief for the content. Sorry, Jack. Oh, thank you. you thank you. Yeah, the, what's the brief? Just jeans, brownie, your mob. And yeah. Levi's, not officially, but just you love them. Uh, Just Jeans and Levi's are a lifestyle, street-style content format. Yeah. Uh, Styled looks with uh, advice or a review on the fit of the denim in the caption would be great. We're looking for lots of snaps on the street, being busy, light and bright, not moody and dark. Well, don't shoot it on a Sunday morning then, by the way. That's what my tip would be. Oh, my God, this is a no-brainer for you. Smiles and cheeky personalities. Smiles, though. I've seen you smile. Yeah, true. (laughs) I've seen you smile in Instagram as well. Yeah. So what, What's wrong with the smile? You got, you got bad no, taste. Gen, no, generally he's like he's yeah. looking off camera, moody. Like, hey, what oh, guys? Are you looking like a flog? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. No, but I just sometimes I feel like when I smile, it's mega cheesy. Well, you don't have to do that. You mm. need to be authentic for you. So yeah. yes, they say, oh, it might be nice to to be smiling. I- ignore that. You you do you get one of your friends to take a photo of you. Yeah. You know. And, you know, well, a photo, I'm a sweet kid, take 7,000 photos of you, which you will Correct. go through and uh, put under the microscope. Mm, yeah. And, uh, and then just speak honestly about the product. It's not <laughs> going to be hard because you do like the product. Yeah. Okay. Jack, do you have a blue tick yet? No, I don't. <gasps> and they still want you? <laughs> that, that would help. So if it's got to be. What are your ideas so far? Well, well workshop them. street style, right? Mm. I I've already taken a million photos on Flinders Lane because yes. that's my favorite street in Absolutely. the city to take photos. But I've exhausted that. Is it option. a bit dark and moody? That I reckon it could be a bit moody. Why don't you? Why don't you in the jeans, topless, mm. on top of a white horse? I like it. Putin cool. style. Well, Napoleon. Yes. Like bit of Putin. Out, Napoleon. Outside the outside the new Conti at Sorrento. Absolutely. Yes. Hey, what about a uh, skateboard? Yeah, on the skateboard, you know, like a bit of, you're talking about streetwear. He's not six. I know, mate. No, hey, hey mate, that's cool. Get the skateboard <laughs> happening. All right, Dad, cool, man. But me and a skateboard probably don't align, big dog. No. I like your thinking, oh, but me and a skateboard, I reckon people would know. What is your natural habitat? <laughs> what is your natural habitat? No, unicycle. Brownie, are you, we just got a the unicycle. insight, Jack. Brownie's, Brownie's biggest fear is if a group of young kids on skateboards is coming towards him. He just he gets all nervous. He gets all nervous. Mate, all right, well, listen, you're not going to be at home, uh, you know, no. in the jeans doing a puzzle. What are, we, what are we going to have you doing? So I need to be on a street somewhere. My natural habitat at the moment is just two axellers, if I'm honest. 
Well, that's where you need to go. <laughs> it's a bit dark and moody again. Yeah. Need no, some bright light out outside. Out the front somewhere. What about out, out, out that nice street outside the old Entrecot? That's nice. Oh, that's Domain close. Road. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. That's close. But then is it obvious that I'm walking past a restaurant that's shut and that I've gone there purely... Doesn't to matter. Shop? Blur okay. it out. Use portrait. Okay. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Just look, see, I told you. Blur it out. Blur it out. Um, my only my only tip would be, I know there's a there's obviously some remuneration there. Mm. Mate, organised keeping of the clothes. I would just expect that's a given. Well, it's I no, don't it's think not. I can see you wine owner rider style, just trying to you know you'll have to go in and try to steal them later on. But yeah, you should organise that. But I don't, I don't know. Would was that any do, help at all? Would you do a reel? I've never done a reel. It seems what's, too what's, joyous and life affirming for you. What's Ooh, that mean? What's yeah. a reel? Way too positive. A reel, uh, you know, it's like a little movie. It's it's, it's Instagram's take on playing TikTok. Yeah, oh, it's gosh. um, it's, no, a good photo of you. That's all they now. want. Yeah, that's yeah. all they want. In, in the jeans. In the jeans. I've got two pairs. I have to do as well. Wow. Like what do you mean? A, a, a black pair of 501s and a navy pair. Wow. That's... Do it on the Melbourne Star. It's not getting used to the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Up You're the top. Just, just climbing up just to the zooming top. Zooming in. Yeah. The zooming only in. issue, that would require me knowing how to get to Docklands. <laughs> 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 I'm not right. Is that any help? Not really. No? A little bit. But, um, blur it out and portrait. You'll be fine. Good, Good luck. Taking away. Good luck, young man. Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Arch Barker. It's wonderful to have this beautiful human being back oh, in the studio. Nice. And if you want to see Arch for yourself live in the flesh, isn't flesh a strange word? Anyway, uh, see Arj in Power Hour at the Athenaeum Theatre from tomorrow. Tickets at comedyfestival.com.au. Here's Arj. We love you. We're so thrilled to see oh, you. Yeah. Hello, Arj. Thanks. Yeah, nice to see you guys. I'm excited to be here and I wanted to come in. You know, usually I do the show tomorrow, the big show, but I'm sorry I had to back out of that uh, because I have massive news. I couldn't wait. What is it? Um, and you guys deserve to know. You've always been supportive. Mm. Basically, I'm getting out of comedy. This is my last uh, Melbourne... Uh, comedy festival um i'm quitting comedy full stop really yeah i mean i know it's sad but i just i don't need it anymore and uh i think when you hear the story i think you'll understand and i know folks out there's probably a couple like car crashes right now like what it's like mm. big it's a big deal it's a big yeah. deal no they're monash the car park but, right now but listen here's what happened and i think it all it all makes sense i basically i don't need it anymore as why i'm getting out because well okay just about eight months before anyone even knew the word covid it's like well pre-pandemic. I did a little gig from with my buddy Johnny. He runs Town uh, Town Hall Hotel in North Melbourne, Errol Street. It's a classic place. Be a great little pub. It's not massive. He said I can't pay much. He said Johnny, I don't care. It's not about money. Let's have some fun, man. You're my buddy. So we did the gig. It's well attended, but it's not a huge place. And afterwards, he said, "Here, I'm so, I'm sorry, it's not more." And he handed me an envelope with about seven. Close to seven hundred and fifty dollars. That was about seven hundred and forty two dollars cash. I said I did barely paid any attention, stuffed my back pocket, let's have a couple of beers, forget about it. But then earlier that week I found this envelope and I thought, oh, I gotta go deposit this and you know, I gotta fill stuff out. It's just it's like such a pain in the butt. Mm. And now if you said, Arge, why did you do what you did next? Then I would say, I don't even know why I did it. Because I really don't even know to this day, but I could say maybe I thought it would just be a funny thing to do. I don't know. But I took that $750 and I invested it in QR codes. <laughs> and, well, the, uh, the, rest is history. the rest is history. I'm worth, I'm worth nearly $24 billion now. <laughs> Eight months before the pandemic. And, uh, and I, I, yeah, I get, it's incredible. I get 75 cents every time someone uses a QR code. It's like, I guess no one was going near How it. How did you know? How I did didn't. You, That's what I mean. It was the dumbest miracle. thing I just did. And it's just so weird. But now I don't even, I don't, nothing has meaning anymore, you know? And I thought, well, what? I just stay in comedy, just stay in de definitely in comedy until eventually I'm taken out by some wayward A-lister come from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's your big news. How, how are you in general? But, right? I'm, but we're going to make it a good one. We'll yeah. go out with a bang. This show is, uh, is bulletproof, uh, hilarious from beginning to end. The last hurrah uh, with Arj Barker. Yeah. Get, get your tickets at comedyfestival.com.au. It's at the Don't Athenaeum. Don't miss him. That's what a venue. Mm. What a venue. What a venue. But, listen, so how are you? It's good to see you. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm good. I'm just trying to hang in there. And I'm glad the festival's going ahead because you just don't know. I mean, 
you know, uh, every time I do a show, I'm so thankful. And we're doing the show. Yes. It's happening, but uh, there was, I think there's no restrictions. We're going to have a great mm. time. Yeah. Well, you but got you, in a tight window last year, didn't you? You got the show in, I which we came to in, see. Man. It was magnificent. I've been very fortunate, but, you know, things change so fast. I mean, what are they on a couple thousand cases a day now? And mm. yet we're going to go and do a fest uh, show in an awesome theater, the Athenaeum. What was it? Less than a year ago, I was I was flying from Perth, which in itself this is a minor Chrissy miracle Seven that I got to go podcast. to WA. I mean, it's more more or less like Narnia at this point. <laughs> <laughs> flying to Sydney. This is about I think it was I think it was last June, and they said you want a newspaper, and I said, well, not really, but I'll take one because it's boring on mm. the airplane, because I don't normally read like the paper news. You know, I got you know, anyway, it doesn't matter. So I, the I'll never forget the front. So now New South Wales is on 5,000, 10,000 cases a day. Everyone's going about their business. The point of this story is how much things change and how mm. quickly. And the front page that day, less than a year ago, was on a national newspaper. Full leading front page story was because one man had COVID and was in Sydney. And, and it made, somehow made a whole article out of it. And and it even had a little chart with timestamps everywhere he went. Yeah, and I'm right. reading I'm reading oh. it, I'm yeah. reading down the thing. He liked the whole barbecue thing. shops. He went to a lot of barbecue shops. I remember that story, Arch. Yeah, I I remember reading it and uh just thinking, Good lord, does COVID give you energy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he went to seven barbecue stores. Thank you for stepping on the punchline, by the way. And he went to seven barbecue stores in a sing in an afternoon. If yes. I spend twenty minutes in one Bunnings, I need a two-hour nap after. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, the Power Hour, uh, Athenaeum. It's from March thirty. But I say this about everyone, but you really got to be quick if you want to get tickets to Arch. Comedyfestival.com.au. Well, it's not. I don't think there's going to be a huge panic, you know, for tickets. But on the other hand, being that it it is my last, yeah, this is it. Yeah. Unless I decide to stay in comedy, and that whole thing about QR codes is a big gag. <laughs> <laughs> find out. Get a ticket to find out. Good to see you, Arch. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have a great time. And and by the way, just so people know, this is sort of a this shows like a collect collection of some of my greatest and favorite bits from over the years, over 30 years of doing comedy. Oh God, I can't and wait. new stuff sprinkled in. A UFO chat? A what? A UFO, no, UFO I, chat I don't year? think I'll cover the UFO issue this year. <laughs> that is an important subject. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I think we need a whole interview just for that. Because they are here and they've been here. But uh, that's another for another time. But yeah, it's going to be a great uh, show. So thanks for everyone for coming out. I love Melbourne, of course. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else. The Power Hour, see Arj live while you still can. Go to comedyfestival.com.au. As usual, a pleasure, Arj. Thanks, mate. Hey, that's all right. Thank you, guys. Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Excited when I turn the page of the paper today to see that Shaquille O'Neal is coming to town. Ooh. What? For one night only. How good is this? This is great. Thursday, 25th of August. He'll yep. be coming to Margaret Court Arena in a sit down, and obviously, oh no, oh, no. obviously he's going to have to sit down oh, with someone no. and have a chat. Listen, I, I what just you know, dullard have they chosen? Oh, I was going to say no. this is the you know this bit hurts me because oh. I, this is all I want to do. This is all I want to do. If someone had asked me to do it, I would have said yes. Let's do a guessing game. Andrew Guys, Seb Casella, a- Richard Wilkins, ha- Hamish McLaughlin, Jared Whateley, Eddie McGuire, oh, no. Daryl Summers, Daryl. <laughs> Now, who would be really boring? May I ask what the format of the night is? Is it a, a night with Shaquille, an evening with? An everyone? evening with yeah. Shaquille yeah. O'Neal. So Their choice fantastic. could make or break who, who, the evening's yeah. quality. 100%. Well. Why wouldn't, they, why wouldn't anyone why ask wouldn't me? They, you know what? We have an insight. We have an insight here because the Hour Group is bringing Shaquille O'Neal out. And a man that's associated with the Hour Group is none other than the great real estate agent from Mitchum, Dan oh Del Tondo. Oh, my God, Dan Del Tondo. So he's got his fingerprints all over this, Christine. Now, so Dan Del Tondo, running. just to remind you, was the man who tracked down Dolph, Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren. And, uh, and he'll track down others. He's tracked down someone else as well. Yeah, it's he has. been more than longer. Why doesn't Del Tondo know that I like I love basketball yeah. and that I, I'm the I'd be a good person to choose to interview these stars when they come out? Well, I think it's down to it's neck and neck at the moment. It's down to you or Andrew O'Keefe. 
Ah, uh, so we, we think oh, actually, we I'd, think we can get you up, eh? Hey. Listen, so I'll we, tell you what, I'm happy if Andrew if, if Andrew O'Keefe is driven to the gig in the same limo we used to go to, to Deal or No Deal, then I'd I'd watch that interview. But who is it? It hasn't been announced yet. Sam, it's got to be it's you. It's got to be you. So we are going to run this campaign. Yes. We're going to push it hard for for an evening with Shaquille O'Neal and Sam Page. Oh, and, and look at the dates. Right now, now, there's no issue with that. Thursday, the 25th of August. Straight away, you think, oh, no, front bar. Yeah. Oh, no, however, that's the bye weekend before <gasps> the final series. Sammy. And Sam always has that Thursday off. Let's get Dan Del Tondo on right now. Call Del Does Tondo. he have an in? De- absolutely, Del Tondo. He's got it in with everyone. This is happening. I would come to that. We are launching this. Everyone's got to get, Melbourne's got to get behind this. No. Now, we can get Seb Col- Costello along to introduce Sam. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, yeah, he's yeah. going to introduce your <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do we, is this a possibility? You know do we what, think hey, this is a real thing? Hey, what about this? Yes. What about I'll do I'll do tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. An no, audition? I'll, yeah, I'll do it. No, I'll do a formal pitch to yes. I'll do a I'll do a plea to Del Tondo. Okay. I'll, like I'll I'll read out yes. something. Like, this is my resume. This is who I've interviewed before. Dino can play the role you of just, Shaquille. I'll be Shaq, man, yeah, just so you can to, practice. I'm not, I'm not going to practice. Maybe. I'm just going to give him a bona fide. Vote one, Pang. Yeah, yeah. To interview Shaquille O'Neal. Will you do that on Thursday? I'll, I'll do that on Thursday. Okay, perfect. But right. I, I, I don't, I'm not very comfortable doing things I actually care about. Oh, come weird, on. Well, just the come weird on. thing is, is that Sam doesn't like to work and he wants to work. He wants this. We need to seize this opportunity. Yeah, we've got to move faster because yeah. we, we, we know that Maguire will be there. McLaughlin will be there. Of course. Summers oh, yeah. will be there. They'll yeah. all be just lining well, up. Well, that's up to you, Del Tondo. Do you want the night ruined? Yeah. Or do you want, you know, me to be there? You got, four, <laughs> hey, you got 48 hours, Pang. I'll Del Tondo, ready. he's coming gonna, on on I'm Thursday. Gonna, I'm going to pitch to Del Tondo and the... I love okay, it. Okay, beautiful. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Over 100. Book a holiday. Do it. What if is Aussie for travel? Now, I'm about to play Tony Martin's intro song and make sure you oh. look this up on Spotify. <laughs> it's <laughs> Making Muffin. We're making muffins. Hey, yeah, that is Oliver Clark. Dressed as a cat. We're playing it because you're on the video. Yeah, I am. There's, there's a lot of people who are hypnotised into being dressed as a cat. Look, uh, is everything okay in here? I haven't mm. said anything so far that's going to get me punched in the face. <laughs> Not yet. Any dramas? <laughs> no. I'm assuming you've already talked about this. You've been yeah, slapped, have you? Or anyone got out of the crowd after you've uh, directed a joke at them? No, I haven't. Well, I've mentioned this before, I think, but uh, in the early 80s, I was in a sketch comedy group in New Zealand and we would play, you know, football clubs and RSLs and always just died in the arse. <laughs> and I remember we are on stage one time and it was going really badly mm. and a whole lot of big blokes got up out of their seats and we went, oh, no, this is going to be trouble. And then they left and we went, oh, they've gone. And what they did is they went out to the foyer And uh, about six of them managed to pick up a huge Maori canoe that was in the foyer. And then they charged the stage and heaved the canoe up onto the stage. They basically (laughs) basically threw a boat at us. Wow, they were really angry with your material. I'm taking that as a thumbs down. And there's there's really no comeback for that unless you've got, say, a dinghy backstage that you can come back with. Mm. Did did the club uh, launch an inquiry into that, (laughs) just like the Oscars have into Will Smith's? Did you watch the Oscars? I I actually saw that. Well, I didn't see it live because it went to black. Yeah. And then it was suddenly all over the internet. It was oh, go to the Japanese television no, feed. No, no, I saw it live. The Channel oh, Seven feed it live. was proper. Right. I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh, hang on, no, I, I'm confused. It was when Kevin Costner came out. It suddenly went to black. <laughs> Did you notice that? Yeah, it's like <laughs> the <laughs> incident threw everything out of whack for the next ten minutes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what's, your, what's your take on well, it? Well, I you, just could you thought. I mean, what you were saying? Chris Rock is as old and as thin as I am. And it didn't really seem to affect him very much. And I'm going, that's the bloke who played Muhammad Ali. That's a pretty piss weak punch when you think about it. Mm. <laughs> didn't have yeah. much of an effect. Punch or a slap, Granny? Slap. Uh, slap. Uh, but, yeah, I thought he took it pretty well. Yeah. Well, you forget about the joke or whatever and the reaction from uh, Jada Pink and Smith. But uh, I was surprised at how well he took it. Yeah, well, I uh, haven't heard yet whether I'll be doing the uh, voiceovers for the Logies this year. But mm. if so, I will be locking the door to the booth. <laughs> yes. Because mm. I'm trying to think if there's any... Tr- I'd, Who'd you be could, coming for you? 
Probably Duff. Brian Brown, because Ooh. isn't that... Why Brian, Brian Brown? Brian Brown, well, not, not my father, no. but Brian Brown, the actor. Brian yeah, Brown. He's a big fan of this show. Well, I had... Uh, if You can actually see the footage on YouTube when I when Brian Brown wins an award for something and he's coming up to the stage and on the voiceover I go, it's Brian bloody Brown! And you can actually see him look around like, where's that coming from? Really? And how can I punch that person in the oh. face? Now, is that a reference just to, to, to his, his acting? Const- and his he, just, he, will, bloody him. he will crow... Yeah. No, Nobody says bloody more or with more vigour than Brian Brown. Is that Brown. the only reason that he possibly could be upset with your tone? There was a joke on The Late Show, I think, where I was... Uh, and you're a young person and you say things well, without I like thinking. it when he softens it. What, what, <laughs> what were you it was doing? me and Mick Malloy were in Glen Rowan and there was a tree stump and I was interviewing it claiming it was Brian Brown. <laughs> And then, and they're, years... They're probably do it, I reckon, too. They were, yeah, but here's what happened. So years later, about eight years, about eight years after that, uh, the, the film The Dish came out, and uh, my wife at the time, the great Annie Maver, who yes. we've, we've all worked with... One of the um, great laughs of the biz. The great uh, first AD. She was invited to go to a dinner by Sam Neill in a sort of in a posh restaurant in a private room. Oh, There's like only about dream. 30 people. Yes. And so I was invited, so I'm sitting there, and opposite me is an empty chair. Yeah. And then I'm looking around, and I'm talking to Santo Chilauro, and then when I look back, Brian Brown is sitting in that chair, staring at me. Uh, <laughs> like He's an angry, arrived. Like an angry emu. Just this, like, terrifying eyes, and I go, I'm about to die, and then I realised... He's completely pissed. Ah. <laughs> he has no idea where he is, and he has no idea who I am. So you you oh, skipped good. his wrath then, I but got, you may not run from it forever. No, it could well be. If I do the Logies this year, it could well be Absolutely. an international incident. Yes. Tony Mark, to that. Don't move. Back in a second. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Instagram. And Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Nova One Hundred. Get Sizzle Town. It's the best podcast yes. in the damn world. It Tony Martin. It's one of the greats. Listen, the, the rest of you watched the whole Oscars. Yeah, I did. And Sam, I don't know if you've been on Twitter, but uh, at the end of the Oscars, I did tweet that, you know, that was fine, but we all know who the best actor was. Sam Pang and Fisk. And it's amazing how many yes. people got behind that if yes. you look at that tweet. What? Yes. There was absolute... No one took it as a joke. They're going, I agree. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Chrissy is looking what? What very was your his name again in Fisk. What? <laughs> what was your character's name in Fisk? It did yeah. have a it did have a title, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, Harry the Fong? No, it wasn't that. That was the that was my that's my uh, porn name. <laughs> no, listen, you weren't in Fist, weren't you? And I'll tell you what, it's a bit of a, I think it's a contentious issue with you. You're a bit flat. You're a wonderful actor. You've been in films. You've been in major films. You've been in... Uh, I was in the castle the for cast- nine seconds. Nine seconds. You're, uh, did, did you have a... Ca- well, you directed and wrote Bad Eggs. I was in Cracker Jack. You're in Cracker for, Jack. Uh, doing so 16 a- seconds. That was a big one. <laughs> that was a massive one. And yeah, just, uh, you're a bit flat that I've got a... I think, this is serious, I think I've been, I haven't actually done the maths, <laughs> but I think I've been nine films yeah. for a total of about four minutes. <laughs> That's what it adds it's up to. It's hard to take, not to take that personally. Yeah, I oh know. Uh, People love you, but they're not too much quality. of you. Yeah. A bit part player. Uh, well, I appreciate you getting, because you love tweeting. The Oscars is one of the joyful experiences, and I missed it this year, but were you, you're in good form, weren't you? Because there was lots of other things that happened. Well, yeah, there was the in memoriam. There's always a drama about who's been left out. And this year it was Bob Saget, the comedian Bob oh, Saget. Oh, why was he left out? Well, everyone's going, oh, but he's more television. You know, he's in Full House. Oh, and the, no. He directed course, Dirty Work. That is what I was going to say. Dirty Work with uh, Norm, Norm MacDonald. Norm MacDonald and Artie Lang and uh, Rickles uh, may have had a there we cheeky go. cameo. I don't know how many times uh, Sam Pang has reenacted the entire Don Rickles scene <laughs> from that film. That it seems like a strange exclusion. Hey, but every, yeah. that, that happens in the low. Why don't they just put it them in? I don't know, Brownie. They always miss. How can actors you miss are that actors. one? Actors are actors. Particularly the way the small screen and the big screen have merged on, now yeah. anyway. Absolutely, Swanee. Oh, Couldn't there's always controversy. People need a controversy. I had what, I had to go to Canberra on the weekend to uh, work at the um, Canberra Comedy Festival. By the way, I was doing radio interviews and just, oh, yeah. you know, breakfast shows have different approaches. Yes. So I've called up a, a team, a zoo, uh, they are on in the mornings in Canberra, and the bloke on hold's gone, uh, yeah, can you keep it tight, mate, because at the end of the segment, host of the show is going to be uh, attempting to eat 20 chicken nuggets in uh, under a minute. Yes! 
Okay, why would you do that? And he's going, because we've looked in the Guinness Book of World Records and the record is 19. <laughs> Yes. Why don't we do stuff like that? Well, you should. Why don't we, Step Dino? Up. Let's, yeah. let's get this going. Why don't we do going. stuff like sure. that? Because it's lame. And no, no. no. Get the hot chilies. Yeah, roll the them future. out. It's the future. It's Have on we the radio. not learned anything from Dave O'Neill doing a BMX jump out the front of the building yeah. and breaking his goddamn leg? I'm sure Dave O'Neill could easily break that chicken nuggets record. <laughs> If he put his mind to it. He did it yesterday. I don't even think if he no put his mind to it. If he just no. mentioned it to him, if he whispered it out the window now. Also, by it. the way, 20 is not a lot. I, reckon, no. I think we do that this week. That can't, no, that can't be right. No, that doesn't sound like if it was I could maybe, eat 20 now. Yeah. In a minute, <laughs> mate, you'd, you'd have it to swallow happy. them in, oh, a, in minute. a minute. What have you done, Tony? Uh, but no, the, that wasn't close. the controversy. Here's how far your podcast must go, because I was doing a show in Canberra and a bloke came up to me after the show and he'd heard one of my segments on your podcast, yeah. and he goes, "Yeah, I heard you uh, having a go at the um, <laughs> the uh, Sydney cover band, uh, Nothing Too Serious." Yes, <laughs> because they were accused of uh, being super spreaders in the very early days of the the yeah. pandemic. And he goes, "That's that's completely false. Uh, nothing too serious. We're not responsible for spreading the coronavirus in New South Wales." And I've gone. Yeah, but ca- tell me this. Are they an Ice House cover band? He's going, no, they're not an Ice House cover band. <laughs> and did you then ask him what his role in the band is? Because I don't know. he seems incredibly <laughs> invested. It seemed like he might be the manager. Yeah. He was dressed as Ivor Davies, I have to say. <laughs> it's, people, it's funny the, the, the issues that people have with what we say. I've had a couple of emails about us um, not making fun of, but shining a light on uh, the prolific movie, recent movie history of Bruce Willis. Yes. And people are upset with us, Sam, because yeah. apparently we're mocking him and he's got serious memory issues. Is that right? So Is pe- that true? People are like, oh, he's got serious memory issues. He can't remember what he's committing to. Oh. Mm-hmm. But that, because I have... Oh, well, that'll help him. He can't remember the last bad film he that's did. Probably, that's probably... Yeah, he's lucky. He's lucky that he can't remember the last film he did. Exactly. But what are these? Where can we get some of that so, so we can what? forget his movies? Who could defend that, Tone? Yeah. The idea that someone comes in, oh, yeah, stop making fun of Bruce yeah, Willis. Yeah. Oh, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> just shut up. Keep it to Nicolas Cage and Stephen well, Seagal. Exactly. If you can. But Bruce Willis, I have heard this and that he is being now fed his lines yeah. th- through an ear. Oh, yeah. I love that. So if we ever do interview him, don't mm. ask him, how do you remember your lines? Yeah, someone will be out in the foyer yes. telling him mm. through his ear. Yeah. But there was a few years ago, remember Marlon Brando came to <laughs> Australia and mm. was, if we told this story before. No, no, but the, the Brando one, what, what, what's your It was on the, the island of Dr Moreau shot yeah. up in Queensland and apparently he had an earpiece and someone was feeding him the lines yeah. and the story is that uh, wires got crossed or there was a feed problem and in the middle of a scene he suddenly said, uh, cab required, uh, please attend address, new farm. He started giving taxi instructions. And you go, how much do you want to see that scene? But the wow. brand, brand, that's, you know, brand, that's Brando at the end, right? Even, in, even in his heyday. Well, not in his heyday, but when yeah. he was... Not you know, say middle aged and onwards. Yes, so there was rumours that he that he'd have the 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 lines either sticky <laughs> sticky tape to the mm. to the head of the yeah. other actor or on the side in cue cards. That's right. There was an actor he's doing a scene with who had the, the lines from the movie <laughs> felt pen on his forehead. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so that Brandy. Brando could maintain an eye I line. Have you always seen... had a great legacy though for Bruce Willis. If he ends up in that stage, you, you've had Brando and Willis. He'll be remembered for that. <laughs> Have you seen the Island of Dr. Moreau? Yeah, yeah, yeah. May I offer you a tidbit about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I've got one too. Oh, yeah. yes, everyone has. Such a train wreck, that movie. Yeah. The director was fired weeks into it. Yeah. But then he left the set and was joined some hippies nearby. Yes. And was <laughs> indulging a bit. And then secretly got a job back on the movie with a mask on oh because there was some God. Freaks. So he was watching... Uh, what the new director was doing That's in right. disguise on the set. That and apparently fantastic. Marlon Brando knew and was bringing him food. And if Marlon Brando's giving away food, you're going, that's, <laughs> that's a sign of respect. But I heard, because there is a scene, and uh, this is the story I heard, a friend of mine worked on it, and they and do you remember there was like a miniature? Yeah. Because Mini-Me in Austin Powers is based on the miniature sort of assistant to Dr that's it. Moreau. That's it. So Marlon Brando, they're filming out in the sort of jungles in yeah. Queensland and he's meant to be playing a piano. So Dr Moreau is going to be playing a piano <laughs> and they bring out this huge black piano and Brando goes, I want a white piano. So then they had to hold filming this scene for a week while a white grand piano 
was craned and helicoptered into the middle of the jungle. And so they set it up and they're ready to film again. And then Brando goes, I think the little guy should have one. Oh, so then God. so then they had to make a tiny white piano for the for Mini B and they had to bring that into the jungle. And when you see the scene in the film, it is mystifying. There's like a scene and then there's another scene and then joining those two scenes is just a shot of Marlon Brando playing a piano <laughs> with a tiny piano on top of it with a tiny guy playing another piano. Oh my God. And the camera just goes round and round for like a minute and the scene is never explained. Unbelievable. Hey, I really? Have you seen that? it? No, I have not oh, seen it. Oh, you've got to see it. I don't know if I do. I've yeah. also got an island of Dr. Moreau's <laughs> yes. Moreau memory. Um, I, for some reason, I know the, uh, the, the tagline. Right. You know that big American voice that yeah, did yeah. All, everything back yes. in the day. In a day, well, yeah, in yeah. a world. He goes at, at the end of the trailer. He goes, unmistakably mad, undeniably beast. The island of Doctor Moreau. Well, that's pretty. It's impressive, Swanee. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. Undeniably man, unmistakably beast. That's the only good thing about the movie. That is no, a... actually, well, frame sounds... for frame, it yeah. is no. like tacky and. Worth watching. Sounds, like, the worst couple, film sounds ever. like there's a couple of pianos that are quite uh, absolutely <laughs> quite worth watching. This is a good uh, tagline for the Sam and Shaq show. Is yes, that really? undeniably man, unmistakably beast. I like it. Oh yes, Tony Shaq would be the man. I'll be <laughs> Anything to mention about the greatest podcast? Uh, Sizzle Town comes out. Oh, I think it's the seventh of April, and it's uh, it's it's pretty blue. Seventh of that. April, blue. Big, yeah, big, big build up. Though. Is that what, is that a, it's only. It's the first Thursday of every month. Offensive, it, offensive material. I think it's offensive material. I can't control what the callers are saying. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <Tom. laughs> Nova, Chrissy Swan, Sam Pang, and Jonathan Brown. Chrissy's celebrity stuff. Everyone's talking about Will Smith and um, Chris Rock at the Oscars. Obviously, everyone's got their opinions. It was very shocking. Very shocking. Will Smith smacked Chris Rock. And then spoke very aggressively and crazily from the audience. Mm. What was scarier, do you think? The physical violence or that menacing yelling? From the yelling? The, the yelling is awful. Mm. It was um, all, it was fired up then. Yeah. The adrenaline was surging through him. Absolutely. What a tool. What a tool. And the, it's a hard act to follow. <sighs> as um, Sam's take. There you go. Yeah, you might, you you might, might not, not like it, it, but that's my view. Well, that's my, my view. view. My view from down here. Um... And a hard act to follow, obviously. Um, and C Chris Rock was absolutely lost for words. But Amy Schumer, who was one of the three hosts of the show, had to come on straight afterwards. And this is what this is how she fixed things. Oh, I've been getting out of that Spider-Man costume. Did I miss anything? <laughs> there's like, there's like a different vibe in here. <laughs> <laughs> I love her yeah. so much. That but, was the perfect thing to say, yeah. I think. 13, 24, 10. Ask Brownies next. Is it sponsored yet or what, Jackie? Not yet. Oh. Soon. Whoa. Still no sponsor. Soon. Soon. Still it's not. not. People don't want to invest in Ask Brownie. No, no, hang on a minute. Ooh. It's sponsor is booked. The sponsor is booked. Is there okay. any, any updates on my, uh, monocle? on my monocle request from Specsavers? No reply. Thank you. No reply. Okay, ball. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. One man. Many questions. Can birds smell? Why is the strawberry known as a multiple fruit? Have all the answers. I run on me fries. Ask Brownie. 13, 20, 14, your questions for, for Brownie. He's ready and One. willing and able. One man. Many questions. Lots no, of answers. No sponsor. Yeah, no, we've got it yeah. sponsored. It's for the new. It's for the new term. We want to make a big song and dance about it. Sexy land in the new. T no, it's not sexy land. Damn it! No, it's uh, it's another great sponsor of ours, and we'll make a big celebration around it. Okay. I tell you who should. Um, uh, sexy land should sponsor your evening with Shaquille O'Neal, Sam. Yeah, they yeah, should. Well, yeah, they should. <laughs> <laughs> or any other of my. Thousand segments that I bring to the show. Yes. Let's go, uh, Alfie. You do do the lion's share of segments. <laughs> Alfie. Yeah. How are you, Hello. Alfie? Good on you, mate. What's your question? Good morning, everyone. And how do meteorites 
go so fast in space when there's no gravity? Good How question. do meteorites oh go so fast Nelson. when there's no gravity? It's interesting. So uh, he's obviously learned this. Uh, this question may have come up in, in science class. Yeah. And now he's trying to trick me because he knows the answer. I've got no doubt in my mind that Alfie knows the Ask answer. Ask him. Ask uh, Alfie. Right, Alfie. Do you know this answer? You don't have to tell me the answer, but do you know the answer? Yeah. Hey, Alfie you knows. Little it smart ass. Mystic brown. Hey, come on. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'll take that back, Alfie. You're a good kid. Alfie, how old are you? Seven years old. So you've just told a seven-year-old called Alfie mm. that he. You told him that he was a smart ass. Yeah. Mm. Hey, well, what are you, Will Smith? <laughs> oh, he's, he's trying to trick me. So. <laughs> There's a lot of coaching happening in the background. A lot of coaching. Like, you're yeah. a smart ass. You're a smart ass. Oh, got him! Oh! <laughs> Alfie, I'm Alfie. working like a puppet. What's going Alfie, on? Alfie, you've hurt my feelings. Yeah, I'm not happy with you. David Strassman in the background there. Yeah, David Strassman's on fire. Uh, okay, Alfie, I'm going to have a crack at this, considering you know the answer and you can tell me whether I'm correct or not. Uh, how do meteorites go so fast when there's no gravity? Well, things in space are actually moving. So planets are moving at light speed, stars are moving. So um, the, 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 even though there is no gravity in space, uh, they are moving at the speed of light or speed. They're moving very fast. Anyway. Alfie, is that, there that, you go, Alfie. is that the answer you have, Alfie? You're so smart, Brownie. Yeah. So was that correct, Alfie? There you go. Ah, yes. Mm. You know the same as a seven-year-old. Mm. Oh, yeah, I feel good. <laughs> well done, Alfie. You're going to load him up, Dana. Alfie's hit the jackpot, a Cadbury Easter pack worth $200. Oh, Alfie. Oh. Cadbury Easter, the, the hunt starts here, boy. Awesome, thank you. Yes. Good on you, Alfie. You've got a future, didn't, kid. Didn't need mum for that, thank you, did you? you got something you? for the pack. about now the chocolates are coming. <laughs> Carolyn. Yeah. Carolyn in Lang Warren. Hello. Hello. Hello, Carolyn. Look, first of all, I'd like to say I cannot believe I got kicked to the curb for a seven-year-old. Mm. Mm. <laughs> In what way, Carolyn? Mm. You're on air. Well, I'm, mm. I'm coming up second. Oh, mate. Oh, you... did you want? Did you want the you first? Want to position? lead us off. That... I, I, I want to top billing, and I'm going to come around and smack you all. Oh, mm. right, Will okay. Smith style. See what she's doing there? Topical. Walk it off, Carolyn. Will Smith style. Yes. All right, Carolyn. Now, my question for Brownie is. She's and I'm going to throw a word in here that, you know, I really like and I never hear. It really irks me. Why do grown men, grown-ass men, why do they wear baseball caps backwards? Mm. Oh. Neck burn. Especially, especially inside a venue. Inside Great question, what? Caroline. Yeah, and I wondered that last night when I saw our boy... Well, my boy, Nicky Rewalt, walked past Yuck. with a backwards cap on. Oh, he no. loves a backwards baseball cap. and I didn't know that about him. He loves it. Uh, I, I can think of no other reason. Yeah, It's, all, it's a, a bit about look at me. Yeah, they want yes. a bit of look at me time. Also, Jonathan, on Victoria Street, Thank I you. saw a Range Rover and the window came down. It's Campbell Brown in it. Backwards cap. Oh, I didn't really? Know. Too old for it. I didn't know no, it but is. also it would be hard to drive with a cap on. You like the vi- the visibility. Wrong. Would be great. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Uh, I think it's all to do with a bit of a uh, lack of attention, maybe. Wrong. They want uh, a bit of look at me time. So that's my only explanation. I hope Nick Rewald's listening. All right, keep going. Let's Good on you. Uh, Carolyn, you've won a double pass to the Van Gogh exhibition at the Loom, an epic adventure uh, into art. Book now at the I Loom. I've heard, good, I've heard good things I about do that. Theloom.com.au. It's good. absolutely amazing. Uh, quicker with these two, Jackie's uh, saying. Let's go, Pascali. Pascal. Hi, guys. Pascal. Hey, hey, uh, what's your question, Pascal? Um, oh, my God. Why does my dad get belly button fluff? He swears he doesn't put it there. Because he's drunk. <laughs> He swears he didn't put it there. <laughs> Why do men get belly button fluff? Yep. Well, we go through puberty, testosterone. That would be my basic answer. What's that nah, got to do with nothing to do with fluff it. in your belly nothing button? Where do you think the fluff comes from? Clothes. Yeah. It's a hole in your body. You wear clothes. It goes into a... 
orifice. Ah. That is true. Oh, sorry, uh, as in loose stuff. Like, no, no, are you saying fluff that actually you know, grows fluff. or fluff that st- stays in there? Oh, I thought, yeah, no, I, I thought no, you no. mean the old bum fluff that grows. <laughs> no, you're talking so, about the oh, okay, fluff. Right. The blue, and it's always navy blue or black, always. That is true. Yeah. Good on you, Pascal. You're going to be jacked up on sugar, Pascal. A Cadbury Easter pack worth two hundred dollars. <laughs> Cadbury Easter, the hunt starts here. Uh, these like are it. great prizes. Yeah, no, they're good prizes. I love it when you get like get just a bit upset, a bit annoyed at the question. Come on, Talia. Right, last one, Talia from Cranbourne. Cranbourne. Good morning, guys. How are you? Hello. Good, darling. I have a question for Brownie. Hit Brownie, us. you yes. said Will Smith was a slog for reacting the way he did to Chris Rock. My question to you is, if someone made a joke at your wife Kylie's expense, mm. would you not react the same way? Oh. I'm not sure. You'd have to ask Amon Sullivan. Unless it's a weekend. Area 100.